We are moving right through fall and right through the college football season. Not far from the college basketball season. And of course, a lot going on in the NFL. Major League Baseball playoffs are also going on. Obviously not going to be covered here amongst the Pittsburgh region. The NBA has started. No NBA team in Pittsburgh. But we're going to cover what we can here on the Pit Stop here. Presented by, of course, Pittsburgh Sports Now and our Sports Now properties. I'm Mike Ossi. That's Mike Bakovacan. And we will be joined midway through the show by our George Mikulowski, who is our Pitt basketball beat writer for PSN. And we are going to ma mainly focus here on what's going to happen the rest of the season for Pitt football and then transition into some storylines that are surrounding Pitt basketball as they've certainly dealt with a lot off the court. But we'll get into what's going to happen here on the court in a very important season for Pitt basketball and Jeff Capel, as we've talked about on past shows. Rubber may meet the road at some point. Before we get there, Mike, Pitt football, they are now getting into an important stretch of their season because they entered this year with tons of hope and promise. They wanted to make sure last year was not a blip on the radar and a fluke season. They wanted to take an ACC title into more. People thought playoff was a possibility and they predicted them to be there. That now seems pretty much out the window now, especially after the Georgia Tech loss. They are fighting to get a ranking again. They've gone through a season with a lot of injuries. They've been good at times. They've looked not as good at times. You have Slobe is back in there, seemingly healthier. He's back in there now at QB. You have Louisville coming up. So in terms of the schedule ahead and what you want to see and think needs to happen the rest of this season to make sure it doesn't go off the rails, what does Pitt need to do? What about this matchup is something that you're looking at and even this schedule ahead for Pitt to make that Georgia Tech just a hiccup and have this still be a quality season? Um, it, this, this season has been really weird, Mike, in the sense yeah. that if you, if you get the pulse of most Pitt fans right now, you know, you would think that they're uh, having an awful season. Things are bad. Uh, things are falling off the rail and, you know, there's no hope. It, it right. just, I, I think a lot of that has to do with what happened last year when you start getting a taste of winning. Expectations people, are up, right? Yeah, and and they and they want to get back. They 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 felt they felt as though Pitt had a really good chance to make it back to Charlotte. Right. You know, any bad thing that happens, I think they uh, fans in general exaggerate it by ten. Like like it's the end of the world. Hundred percent, they do. Yeah. It, the reality is, here's the reality. Reality is Pitt isn't playing as well offensively. There's plenty of time to get that going. They have the pieces to do so. They had a bad loss to Georgia Tech, no doubt. Yeah. Their other loss was <laughs> right. the best team in the country, one of the best teams in the country, Tennessee in overtime, mm -hmm. and they were playing with a third-string quarterback or, or yeah. a quarterback that was – on one leg. If you take the Georgia Tech loss away, you could argue that Pitt was getting disrespected by being out of the ranking. You could argue they were still a good team, especially with injuries. That is certainly a really, really good loss to have, even though they hadn't had a great victory because the other wins have been against teams that have been exposed a little bit this season as well. But the Georgia Tech situation yeah. kills it a little bit, and the vibe is like, now negative, right? Yeah, and it's just like last year where, where everyone – focused on Western Michigan for the entire season right. until Pitt made that run at the end of the season in the second half to win the AC, uh, you know, to get to the ACC championship and then ultimately win it. Right. I, I totally could see that happening this year. Um, it's still I'm, about winning the coastal to get in. Yeah. That, yeah that division's it, not gone yet. That's what it's about. Right. It, any talk about the playoffs and stuff, they got hyped up because of Desmond Howard. What, what were the chances? What, what are the chances? Look at what's going on right now in college football. Pitt yeah. wasn't going to make the playoffs. Their, their, their goal, the ultimate goal right. is still there. Um, there's a lot of teams right now that are ranked and getting a lot of hype and, you know, uh, patted on the back. And if you actually look at their schedule, uh, 
you know, they've played crap. Yeah, we saw what happened to Kansas. <laughs> they were 5-0. Yeah. and oh, They got ranked ever since Daniels went down, and they got a tougher schedule with some ranked teams, even in conference. They're exposed. They're not ranked anymore. They're not going to get ranked. Right? I'll, name, I'll name a couple of them. Um, UCLA and Syracuse. Just wait till they play somebody, actually, and sure. then we'll find out. We found that out with Penn State last week. Yeah. Up until this point, and it's the same formula a lot for – the uh, James Franklin era is uh, they play they play a crap non conference schedule for the most part. Mm-hmm. They beat all the average teams in the Big Ten, and they finish the season with eight nine wins. Everyone thinks they're good or or elite. That's the buzzword yeah. now, elite. But then yeah. when they play teams that are actually really good, you know they get their doors knocked off. Yeah, they deserve so to be ranked, right, but they're yeah. not a top ten right. team. Right. So, you know, you could talk about all you want. Pitt played a really good team in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, and they hung with them. They more than hung with them. And nothing is lost for Pitt at this point. Um, what has to happen to get to your question, they need to find a way somehow between Frank Signetti and the uh, the offense to find a deep passing game. Uh, the trend now, and it's not only with Pitt, if you watch the NFL, which is unbelievably boring these days, uh, every everyone's passing game, for the most part, aside from maybe Kansas City and Buffalo, everyone's passing game, including the Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah. is east to west. Ten yards of the line of scrimmage, quick pass. And that was, that's what Pitt's doing right now. And it's amazing that Abanaconda has had the season he has with uh, nine or ten guys up on the line of scrimmage, and he's still in being able to run, which tells you what, what type of back he yeah. is. Pitt needs to find a way. They need to trust Keaton Slovis. Frank uh, Signetti needs to take the gloves off, the kid gloves off, and they need to go. They, they need to find a deep passing game. They've had that the last couple of years. Right. That's what that's what exploded yeah. for them that's last what, year. That's what opened things up. Right. If they're able to start completing passes of more than 15, 20 yards, that'll open things up. Pitt's offense will be fine. If they continue to do what they're doing and, uh, uh, you know, treat Keaton Slope as like a kid and have him play tentatively, then unfortunately I think you're going to keep getting what you're getting. The unfortunate thing for Pitt is or the test is going to be the easy part of their schedule is over with. Now now they're getting the big boy football. So I think the – and things are going to start – things are going to heat up this Saturday in Louisville mm-hmm. with a really good quarterback in Cunningham. Then you go to undefeated North Carolina. Um, you know, Syracuse. Then, yeah, Syracuse, oh. Miami. They can prove your point that maybe Syracuse is overrated, or if they don't yeah. show up, then Syracuse fans are going to say, no, nope, this is our special year. So right. a lot of what we're saying can be proven here coming up. Mike Pekovic and Mike Oste here. We will have Jordan Michalowski on in a matter of moments here. It's the pitch stop. You can find us can watch on our YouTube channel, but also you can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, etc. all over where you can listen anywhere you can listen, in the car, on the walk, on a run, with your dog, whatever. Trying to get the baby maybe to stop screaming. That's what I do. Um, but yeah, Pitt has a lot of it in front of them. They still can certainly win the ACC. It is certainly still possible with these games coming up. It will not be easy, though. North Carolina and Syracuse will certainly be brutal games. Louisville is not a ranked team, but they've been competitive in almost every game this year, and that is what happens when you have a quality QB. I do think the issue maybe for Pitt fans that even off of last year being a major bowl appearance in a conference title is the vibe maybe will always be, and we talked about this with Chris Muller of 93.7 The Fan, and he thought maybe this was what they were finally getting over, but then the week after we had him on the show, you do see Pitt lose to Georgia Tech after the bye. So maybe there are going to be some Pitt fans, the naysayers, Mike, that you're talking to. They're going to say that even last year with the great year, you did have Western Michigan, you now have Georgia Tech. So there is a pitting loss, even in the midst of Pitt being a top 15 program or a ranked team or a very good team. You could argue, and it's been said, that if you didn't have the Western Michigan loss, they might have been a playoff team last year, the way it shook out. So that is their fault they didn't get in. We'll see this year, though. This is different than last year. You don't have Pickett in his fifth year looking for a Heisman. If they get in the ACC title game, there's nothing to be mad at. So they can no, get over no, this it, Georgia Tech loss for sure. And if you go back to you and I have been doing this uh, you know, to our shows. Yeah, a couple of years now, a year at least. 
everyone yeah. thought, and me included, uh, I shouldn't say everyone, but I thought that... That they were dead last year, right. Well, their season would be dictated on what happens the next two weeks. And I still feel that way. Well, that's true. It, yeah. Uh, right. If they if they win uh, these next two weeks, um, in particular against North Carolina, if they win these next two weeks, I, I would lay a lot of money that Pitt makes it back to the ACC championship game. And probably ranked again. They might even get ranked. Well, I know. At the this way point, I, I think, you know, if, if you keep winning and what, what's happening – Right. It'll be ranked, but I, I don't know that that's on their radar. What, what they have to do is find a way to get North Carolina a loss. And that they, they do that, yeah. then that'll be a two-game win, right. and everything will be okay. If they lose to North Carolina, um, chances are there, there's a really good chance that their season's done as far as winning the ACC championship, and then it's just yeah. about winning as many games as possible. That is going to be a uh, huge game uh, for them next Saturday. They can't look ahead to this Saturday uh, versus Louisville. But next week uh, is pretty much their ACC championship as far as whether or not they have a chance. And I and I, I, I still think uh, they have a very good chance to do so. I, I Hopefully this Biden yeah. helps them. They figure some things out and, uh, you know, they put on a little second half surge here, which I think is uh, you know, very possible. Yeah. And when you marry this season, which could still happen in front of them with last year, they're still building the program up. So if they take care of business and they win these big games, certainly against North Carolina for the coastal, this is the last year of the coastal. So they still can get in that way and defend and et cetera, then doesn't have to have a conversation of all oh, the program fell off and it was an aberration. If they lose those critical games, and they end up with a six win season. You're going to hear that in the off season. So Pitt yeah. does have it in front of them to create a little bit of the narrative, what, what happens here moving on. Mike Vakovic and Mike Osti, I do now want to bring on our George Michalowski, who is our Pitt basketball beat writer for Pittsburgh Sports Now and has a podcast that you can certainly find throughout our Pittsburgh Sports Now properties and also anywhere you get your podcasts there, just buckets. That's a fantastic program, by the way, George. So happy to have you on. And we now are going to transition into some basketball talk. It's been a while. I'm kind of excited here, an important season for Jeff Capel as well, and a new look pit team. It, 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 for, for any casual fan who hasn't been paying attention to the offseason, you just roll in when a season starts. George, kind of catch those fans up in terms of how this team will look. How do you think this team's going to kind of unfold this season with Ugly there? You're looking at Nelly Cummings. You, you got a, a new look team how the lineup's going to look, maybe some impact players that Pitt fans maybe aren't familiar with that weren't even a part of this team last year. Right, so thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Always uh, love to be a guest on the Pitt Stop. And, and like you said, uh, we've got the Just Buckets podcast with one of Pitt's returners that's going to be yep. big, Jamarius Burton. Um, so Burton's going to play a big role this year. John Hughley's back. Nike Sabandi's back off a torn ACL from last year. Um, they've got some other returners, but they did go to work in the transfer portal this offseason. So uh, Pitt went out and got Nelly Cummings, the hometown kid from Midland, PA, uh, played at Lincoln Park in high school, played at Bowling Green to start off his college career, then at Colgate, went to two NCAA tournaments. He was all Patriot League players. I called his high school games, by the way. There you go. <laughs> Makes me go. feel yeah. old, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> he's a hometown kid. Yeah, yeah, he's a hometown kid. And so... Uh, Nelly's a big story in Pittsburgh right now, and, and he's going to be a key contributor for this team uh, running the point guard position. Uh, I assume he'll be playing alongside Jamarius Burton at the two, uh, Nike Sabande or Greg Elliott at the three, the wing spot. Uh, Blake Hinson, who's a transfer from Ole Miss, coming in this offseason. He hasn't played in two years. He's one of their biggest additions. Uh, six, seven, I believe 235 he's listed at. So he's going to be a big presence down low. Um, I've also heard that he's had a great offseason shooting the ball. He's one of the best shooters on the team. He's looked like it so far. Um, obviously, we haven't had the chance to uh, see Pitt in practice yet, the media. So um, this is all, you know, based on on paper, on past results. But Blake Kinson, another big addition with Nelly Cummings. Then you have John Hughley up front, you know, in the middle. So um, Hughley is coming off a knee injury that he suffered a few weeks ago in practice. Uh, the word is, you know, John Rothstein reported the other day that um, Hughley should be ready for the season opener against UT Martin on November 7th. I don't anticipate him playing 
much, if at all, in the exhibition game this Saturday uh, against Clarion. But um, John Hughley is going to be the star of this team, you know. And with that more, with that extra talent around him, with Nelly Cummings, with Nike back, you know, with Burton coming into his own after last season, uh, Blake Henson, you know, drawing attention at the forward spot. Hughley's going to have a lot more space to work. I mean, Mike, we were on post game shows all of last year and, and talking yeah. about how John he literally every game was like, how did John Hughley handle the double team tonight? <laughs> like it was, it was a daily, a daily right. thing. So and Nike Sabandi not there last year. He was a player that two years ago when you were coming aboard at Pittsburgh sports now, and we were talking about how he could be that player that could emerge, that could help after it's and Jim Penny was no longer there to be that outside force to create those shots and hit those shots. If he usually was getting double teamed. And then obviously that wasn't the case. They didn't have him. So right. now you will. Right. Right. Yeah. Nike's a, a creator. You know, he's, he's something that Pitt didn't have last year at all. It was, it was Tamarius Burton taking the ball up his Femi Odakale taking the ball up. And these guys weren't really point guards and, and they were forced into this point guard role. Uh, they, they didn't really have a lot of creation going on. And it was a pretty one dimensional team. Honestly, everyone around the conference figured out that Hughley was the only thing that was going to really stop the other teams. Uh, they had a nice win over North Carolina last year, but um, I, I don't really um, think that this team is going to look much like last year's team at all. Um, just because of the impact that, like I said, the transfers Nelly Cummings and, and Blake Hinson will have uh, among other people. Hey George, uh, a couple weeks ago or last week, I think I heard uh, Jeff Capel. I'm not sure if it was the, with the local media or with the national appearance. Maybe it was at uh, ACC Media Day. Um, I thought it was an interesting comment. He, I guess, self-critiqued his staff and talked about two years ago they didn't handle the transfer portal well as far as bringing in players. And him and his staff, uh, he believes that they did a, bit, a better job this year in navigating, I think that was the exact word, navigating the transfer portal. Uh, can you just touch upon that? And is, is that is that a result of, do um, you think veteran guys he got from major conferences that have been uh, somewhat contributors? Is that is, is that what he's talking about? Yes, I think I agree with, with Jeff in saying that they navigated the portal really well this offseason. You know, uh, like you said, the veteran part of it was definitely a big factor in who they went after. Um, Nelly Cummings, obviously the hometown kid. He's kind of like an obvious one. You know, anyone in the country yeah. could have said, okay, Pitt's going to go after Nelly Cummings when he entered the portal, uh -huh. especially coming off of his NCAA tournament performance against Wisconsin. Like, yeah. and, and he wanted to be there. He wants to help kind of salvage this program to end his career. He's even said that so much because he's already experienced an NCAA tournament. Even if he doesn't hear, he wants to do this. So it might not have been a hard get, but it's still right. a hard get. Right. So he, he fits the description of veteran talent that they wanted to get, that they wanted to bring in. He can shoot the ball. They wanted to find people who can yeah. shoot. Last year was a struggle. You had Nate Santos, a freshman coming out of prep school, thrown into the fire, playing 20 minutes plus a game. And, you know, yeah, he looked like a good shooter in practice. All the coaches, all the players said it last year. But when you throw a freshman into the fire like that, playing like the one or the two, you know, early in the season, you know, he wasn't going to shoot the ball well. You can't throw a kid into that position. Expect him to succeed. So they wanted to get shooters. Um, they also got Greg Elliott, who's one of the other guys that's not being talked about as much. He was our most recent guest on the Just Buckets podcast. And uh, Greg, I think, is going to be a guy who's under the radar, but I think he's going to make a big impact. You know, John Rothstein obviously visited Pitt the other day, the CBS Sports, obviously, national basketball writer. And uh, Jeff Cable told him, you know, the prediction is uh, well, Rothstein put out the prediction, but we can assume that Jeff Cable gave him a little hint that the starting lineup is going to look a little like uh, Cummings, Burton, Greg Elliott, uh, Blake Henson, and John Hughley. So most people kind of slotted, and I did myself, Nike Sabandi in that three spot. Um, but obviously coming off a torn ACL, you don't know how he's going to look right away. Uh, but Greg Elliott, you know, he's, he's no slouch. The thing about Elliott is he's another guy that's a veteran. He played four years at Marquette, another high major conference guy in the Big East. And although he battled some injuries – he improved every single year. You know, he made more threes every single year as he went on at Marquette. Uh, he averaged more points every single year as he went on. So he's a guy that's going to camp out on the wing for you that you really haven't had at Pitt in the past few years. And, uh, you know, he, he shot, I think, 39% as a senior, 46% from three as a junior. So it was on limited attempts. It was on, you know, three, four attempts a game, but he didn't appear in all the games in the season because he was hurt. So kind of iffy on, you know, 
production. Like he hasn't produced as much as some of these other guys. Nike has as, as Jamari's has, but um, I think Greg Elliott's going to be an important piece. So um, to, to get back to what you asked, Mike, I, I do think that that Capel navigated the portal. Well, I think the whole staff went in with a plan um, and, and they you know made that plan clear on that last day of the season when we were in Brooklyn talking to him, they were saying, you know, uh, we need to get better players. And although people freaked out about that, and that may have not been uh, the most accountability shown by a leader, um, I think they did go out and get better players. They got better shooters. They got veterans from uh, experienced high major conferences. It's it's all you can ask for in this yeah. situation for Pitt. You, yeah, you can yeah. look at that maybe as a positive too. Glass half full of uh, positive self-reflection that he's going to be mature and say, hey, I didn't do this well here. I'm going to do this better now. Right. Yeah. I think, I think he, he totally accepted that it, that was the truth. You know, they, they didn't have the talent level around the guys. They also had some off the court stuff. They had some injuries, right. Right. but um, yeah, we all know how last season played out, but I, I did think he did a good job this season in the portal. Well, the big, uh, you know, let's get to the big story that everyone's talking about. We can't hide away from that. And that's, uh, you know, Dior Johnson, um, you know, you're going to be, going to his court appearance uh, later on today. Uh, I had, and I, I know I've gotten ripped a little bit for this saying, throwing the team under the bus as far as I, I you know, I did a commentary after uh, the thing, uh, his arrest saying, you know, that this team isn't going to be the same without him. I didn't say they're not going to be good, but it's, uh, it's true. Not going to be the same without him. I don't know what the, I wasn't throwing anybody <laughs> under the bus. I still think this team's going to be better than they were last year. But to your point, uh, but to to the point, uh, George, uh, how much of a loss is this going to be? Assuming that uh, Dior is not going to be here, uh, we don't know. Uh, let, let's go with the assumption that Dior Johnson doesn't play this season. He could play. If he doesn't play, how much is this? Uh, you know, what's the impact on Pitt? Yeah, so he's obviously a really talented player. There's no question that he was a five-star talent. Uh, there obviously were some concerns in the the rankings, the recruiting industry about, uh, you know, about changing schools often in high school. Um, and, and that kind of forced his ranking to go down. But every evaluator, every scout that watched him play was, was in agreement on – uh, that he was a five-star talent. He's a really talented kid. He's quick. He's shifty. He's got insane speed and transition. That was the one thing that I heard uh, from early on this offseason in pit practices was that, you know, transition, getting out and running was his biggest strength. You know, he's got some nice crafty moves when he has the ball in his hands from the point. Uh, but without him, uh, assuming that he's he's suspended indefinitely, you know, we, we will know more after today's hearing. Uh, but I, I know it'll change the outlook. Like you said, it'll be a different team. Uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that it's going to result in less wins. I, I don't think you can correlate those two, especially without him playing a game or even an exhibition with Pitt. Um, he's a really talented kid. He would have played a pretty big role. I'm not so sure he would have started right away, um, as most people kind of assumed. I kind of thought that in the beginning, but um, I'm not so sure he would have had as massive, as, as big of a starter's role as people would have thought when they signed him. Uh, but I do think that, you know, it's it's another missing creator from this offense. You know, it's another Nike Sabande type guard who can, you know, break down a defender, get to the rim, shoot a deep three, or pass the ball in, the, in a crafty way, you know, to his to his teammates. So Nelly Cummings is, is a great point guard to have. I think Nelly's probably, you know, with a bigger role now if Dior is out. I think Nelly's up for the challenge and I think he's really going to be reliable. You know, I don't think Pitt fans should at all be worried about this season, you know, going to the dump after the Dior Johnson news of getting suspended and arrested. You know, I, I think he, he obviously would have contributed, but um, I, I really don't think that this team's mindset, their goals have, have changed much, if at all. Jordan Mikulowski here joining us on the pitch stop. Jordan Mikulowski, our Pitt basketball beat writer, for Pittsburgh Sports Now and host of the Jits Buckets podcast. So, George, obviously when the Dior Johnson news came out, and I do also want to get your thoughts a little bit about Pitt's upcoming schedule, those matchups there when they first start the season. I know you have to go here in a little bit. But when you first heard the news of Dior Johnson, the instant reaction was a lot of, wow, we can't believe this. And we don't want to get into personal and what really happened or what didn't happen because we don't know all that and all that will unfold. And like Mike said, he could play, he could not play. 
all year. So we'll, we'll let that be when we learn more information. But the instant reaction a lot was this is going to be a major hit to Pitt. And you just articulated how it's going to be a hit, but it doesn't have to be the end of the world. There are some then who connected the dots to this is now another piece of criticism that could exist against Jeff Capel if this season doesn't go well. There's a lot of pressure on him. We talked a lot last year on different shows on how eventually it is put up or shut up. And this is a better roster, a more mature roster, leadership here with Nelly Cummings, Ugly back. This should be a better team. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make a Final Four run here. It has to be reasonable expectations of what you expect out of this season and what will get Jeff Capel more rope with fans or even the program. But does anything that happened with Dior Johnson to you – connect any dots to anything of Jeff Capel's tenure? Does it stain it in any way to you? How much pressure does exist around Jeff Capel? And does that increase any pressure that's around Jeff Capel if they would get off to a rough start? Because it's not exactly the easiest schedule here coming up after UT Martin. You have a very new, like Pitt, a West Virginia team that nobody really knows how good or bad they're going right. to be. <laughs> and nobody knows that. We're going to touch on that to a WV Sports now. And then Michigan and other teams like that that are Power 5 programs that are usually good. Pitt could easily go 1-2 and two to start the season. And then people are going to bring all of this back up. Yeah. You know, I think, unfortunately for Pitt, uh, I think nationally, when the Dior Johnson news came out, I think that did, you know, put a dent in, in a further dent in Jeff Capel's you know, reputation since coming to Pitt. You know, it, it, the thing with Pitt right now is that everyone around the program and, and everyone that's covering the program uh, seems to be on the same page with, you know, hey, this team is going to be better than the last few years. This team is going to improve. They have veterans. They have talent. And they have a star in John Hughley. They have a star in Nellie Cummings. They have guys that have been to the postseason tournaments in NCAA basketball before. But the problem is, you know, you have these things like Ithiel Horton, uh, the John Hughley situations, the Dior Johnson situation off the court, that even though those are in the past, those two are in the past, and Jeff Capel didn't have anything to do with those. You know, obviously, you have to hold the leader accountable of what his team does. You have to have a sense of, you know, uh, the team buying in before the season, you know, all these things are happening right before the season starts. So you have to, you know, put some, I don't know. I don't think you put blame on him for these, but from an outside perspective, you know, it, different from what pick guys are saying, like I was saying that the people here think pick up better this year. The people here yeah. think that Pitt can make the tournament this year, but from an outside perspective, all that the national writers, all that the national media are looking at is okay. You know, Pitt's got three felonies in three years. Pitt hasn't improved in the ACC at all. They, they can't get past 12th in the ACC under Jeff Capel so far. What, their ceiling is, I don't know, like eighth in the ACC this year, people are saying. So it, it's it's really tough for them right now because it seems like whatever Pitt did this offseason, it wasn't going to be able to climb out of this hole that uh, it's dug itself and, and outside factors have dug Pitt over the past few years. Um, and, and this didn't really help that. So that's uh, in part why I think things like Pitt getting placed 14th in the preseason poll happened. You know, it's they haven't proved anything and they, they've only really hurt themselves, the players over the past few years and, and the staff not winning a bunch. So it, it's tough. I think everyone around the program is, is kind of tuning out the outside, outside, outside noise at this point. Sorry. Um, but uh, the national perspective feels like everyone's like, okay, this is pit. This is pit basketball again, you know, another, another off the court issue, but I don't, you can't put that on Jeff Cable. It's not, it's, it's a player making uh, an alleged mistake. You know, we don't know obviously what happened yet, but um, it, you can't put these things on Jeff Cable directly. Um, that's, that's what I think. All right, just last uh, real quick, George. We got uh, we got one minute here. Uh, you know, we talked about a lot of the veteran guys returning and, uh, you know, the Hugies, the Cummings, the Sabandis. Uh, name me a player that maybe you've heard about, maybe a freshman or a, a young guy that you think, not he, that he's going to be a star, but that he maybe by the end of the season is going to, uh, you know, have pit, uh, have the eyes of Pitt fans or make, uh, you know, some sort of noticeable impact to, uh, you know, to give more hope for the future. Right. So I brought up Greg Elliott already. He's one of the guys that I do think fits that description and under the radar guy that I think will turn some heads this year. But another guy similar to him in position and, you know, 
um, you know, play style is Nate Santos. He's, he's a guy that I talked about a little bit earlier, a freshman last year who came in, thrown into the fire, kind of thrown under the wing, like, hey, here's our shooter. Shoot every single time we come down the floor. It's like he, he was thrown into an unfair position and a lot of pressure was on him to, to make threes. And, uh, you know, he shot a lot. He shot a lot of threes. But towards the end of the season, when his minutes started to go down, he really didn't make much. So uh, he shot 22 percent from three last year, which is definitely not what you want to see from a, a so-called shooter, sharpshooter. But I've heard really good things about Santos this offseason. Um, gotten stronger. He's, he shot the lights out, I, I guess, in the um, the open practice to the season ticket holders that the media was not allowed to go to. Um, uh, Santos played well. So apparently he's had a really good offseason. I expect him to, uh, you know, try to carve out a role there. You know, who knows if he's going to be starting. Uh, obviously, Greg Elliott and Nike Subandi are all going to challenge for that starting wing guard spot. Um, so uh, I think they can do a lot with these guards, with these wings that they have on the roster. But I think Santos could – uh, really turn some heads if he comes out and, and shoots the lights out. All right, George, definitely appreciate the time. I know you have a lot of work going on here uh, today and then moving forward to preview Pitt actually on the court. But D.R. Johnson, certainly a big story, and we'll learn more and get more information. And right now is, is an alleged crime. We don't know exactly maybe what really did occur. We'll find all that out. And, of course, Pittsburgh Sports Now is where all that news can be found, all those answers when we know them, and all the coverage for Pitt basketball this season. George, appreciate it, man. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. George Michalowski there. Again, our Pitt basketball beat writer with Pittsburgh Sports Now. Mike Fakovic and Mike Osti. We now will round out our Pitt stop of the week as we now go back to Pitt football and talk about some players that are no longer going to be contributing this season to the program. One of them, and this really could have been the headline of the show, but other things ended up occurring. And this was a major story, really, at least in terms of a surprise. And that was wide receiver Jaden Bradley, who originally the news was, oh, man, he entered the transfer portal. Nobody knew why. It thought to be breaking news, surprising news. Why would he want to bolt kind of like a Jordan Addison type of season situation, especially now? We then later learned, and I do see that on Pittsburgh Sports Now, that Pitt and Bradley decided to mutually part ways, and it happened sooner than expected. So, Mike, what are your thoughts on the Jaden Bradley situation? Kind of, it, it was a, a you know, bit of a shock to a lot of Pitt fans when that news broke. And this is middle of a season. This is an off season, like Jordan Addison. Yeah, it, it definitely surprised a lot of people considering the minutes he was getting. Um, it, the last couple of games, he had been one of Pitt's uh, most productive receivers. And, you know, the other thing is after four games, there were four or five games in the season, you know, your, your redshirt op opportunity is gone and he, he right. played his games. So it wasn't as though some of these players that are leaving because they still had uh, the redshirt possibility. He's leaving in the middle of the season. Uh, so he, he's going to get nothing out of this. He's going to, he announced that he's going to finish out uh, the semester academically at Pitt and then, uh, you know, move on. Yeah. Like what's the benefit of him to not play? Right. Yeah. Well, you That's know, what I was told by uh, people were that it just got to be a situation where, you know, I, I don't want to make too much of it, but mm. it was just better for both sides that they were apart and you could read okay. into it, whatever you want with that. Uh, yeah. The, the, I, I think the football side thought that, uh, and I don't want to paint, uh, Bradley out to be, uh, you know, some terrible kid, but for whatever reason, the two sides weren't able to, uh, uh, you know, they weren't getting along. They weren't on the same page. I think Pitt thought that they could uh, keep things uh, together till the end of the season. And then maybe he, uh, they knew he was going to enter the, uh, the portal at the end of the season. It, I guess it just got to the point where that wasn't going to happen and, you know, you go with the Pat Narduzzi motto of um, uh, we, not me. Yeah. Maybe that played into it. Um, uh, I assume that played into it. So that's that that's going to create an opportunity uh, for somebody because, you know, th that's not the most deep position for Pitt. And frankly, aside from Jared Wayne, they've had nobody at that wide receiver position uh, produce, which has been probably one of the biggest disappointments on the season. So this will be an opportunity for somebody. 
and uh, you know, we will see who, but uh, it definitely was surprising. You don't have kids leave in the middle of the season, but yeah. I guess in today's age of college football, um, this wasn't like it was five, 10 years ago. It's different. No, you're you're never going to be surprised in no. today's college football. No. Really, somebody could leave in the middle of us recording the show, and I don't think we'd be surprised. Yeah. We're getting we're Ooh. getting less surprised as the days go by. So that's true. However, doing it in the middle of the season, even in the midst of, of the transfer portal chaos, is still a bit odd. And as you touched on, he's going to finish school. He's not going to play. It really did appear they just need to part ways, which then is how the story kind of unraveled, which made kind of seems a little weirder because usually when players are transferring, they're doing it to better themselves on the field. That's not really the case here. It's also obviously a hit to the offense, a position of need that they lost last year with their number one in Addison being gone. Also, though, Carter Warren yeah. has been announced as being out for the season. Pat Narduzzi touched on this at his recent press conference. This is obviously off of an injury. This isn't a player leaving, but he plays his last game as a Pitt Panther. Just thoughts on his legacy at Pitt and then also the hit that this is because prior to the season, many nationally thought that if Pitt was going to have a really special year and take last year and go a step above, it would be because the offensive line is one of the better groups in the country. They've not been that. They, they've been okay, maybe not as bad as some want to say, but they've not been nearly as elite as others were predicting. And it's not easy to lose a veteran, of course, in the middle of a year. No, Carter Warren uh, is Pitt's best offensive lineman, uh, bar none, not a question. He he will play. Uh, he'll get drafted in the NFL this year, yeah. uh, assuming his injury isn't too bad. I, I, I think uh, Pat touched upon that, that they wouldn't give him instead of rushing him back and maybe uh, re-injuring it or something and injuring his or hurting his uh, pro uh, yeah. future let him get this thing fixed and then move that's on. more important than an ACC title for him now. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a guy that he's impressed NFL right. scouts. He's your prototypical left tackle. Uh, he's been a class uh, representative of, of Pitt. kind of a surprise that he decided to come back uh, this year because there was talk about him in the NFL next year. You know, this is tough. For Pitt, plus, uh, especially because it's going to protect, uh, you know, he, he's going to protect the blind side of the quarterback. The only, and, and this isn't good, but the only good thing, if, you, if, if you're if you really trying to be desperate and pick up something uh, positive out of the situation, is that it's going to give, um, you know, we touched upon it all year, uh, yeah. Carl Ludwig, uh, that Pitt's offensive line for the future is tremendous as far as the talent they have. Um, they have a lot of young guys that are just waiting in the wings that if this was another program, they'd probably be starting right now. This is going to speed up the process of one of those young guys getting on the field so that next year it mm -hmm. won't be uh, their first time. They're going to have six games now right. to uh, get some experience. I'm assuming that's going to be Branson Taylor, a big uh, left tackle uh, from Ohio, he's going to step in. He's played the last couple games with uh, Carter getting injured after the Rhode Island game. So um, that's the only good thing about this is Taylor's probably going to get on the field early. Uh, but uh, too bad for Carter Warren. He wanted to have a chance to go with Pitt and repeat as ACC champions. That's not going to at least happen for him. He'll be around the team and everything. But uh uh, next thing we'll hear about him is his name will be called in uh, next yeah. draft. Yeah, and it also sounded like that this was an emotional hit a little bit for Pat Narduzzi. He doesn't always allow his emotions to spill over in his press conferences what he's personally feeling, but it it appeared from hearing him listening to him that it was ah man, like you don't this you want to ride out this run with this player who did decide to come back and is such an yeah. important piece for him personally, just in general, separate from on the field. But yes, it could be a glass half full take that it could be better for the program in the future. And how you build an elite program a lot of the times is through the offensive line. That's what Alabama did. Yeah. They did yeah, that so yeah. well. That's why people are thinking Najee Harris isn't as elite as he's been because he ran through wide open spaces in college. So we'll see what, what Pitt can do in the Yeah, future. Branson Taylor. And then the, the 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 guy that they don't want to burn his red shirt, and he was their jewel of their recruiting class this year, right. uh, meaning class of 22, was four-star left tackle uh, Ryan Bear. 
from Ohio. He's going to be Pitts, either their left or right tackle. They're doing everything they can to not have to play him this year. Uh, chances are he'll get on the field next year, but they want to hold him out for this year. But I, I think you made a good point, Mike, with uh, Narduzzi's reaction is because quarter, uh, Carter Warren was one of Pitts' uh, captains this season. Yeah. And as I mentioned, he he when you talk about guys that uh, you know college football are about and uh, guys that make the program proud on and off the field, that's Carter yeah. Warren. And uh, that that's why he saw the build through like he's yeah. been there a while. Yeah, exactly. And those are the right. guys Narduzzi's proud of. He appreciated him coming back for uh, another season when he didn't have to. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, this is this is more than just a player being out for the year. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for him, that's the situation right now. But fortunately for him, he has plenty on tape that he will yeah. have his name called. He can rehab. He has a lot of time to do so now. I'm sure that also played into Narduzzi's decision to, and he would listen to his doctors, of course, that, hey, he chose to come back to us. It's now more about him than the team. We got to give him three months to, to get his money, really, because that, right. that's the point of this. If he doesn't get that, it, and if he further injured something in an ACC championship game and then didn't get the bag that he's earned, I don't think Narduzzi, and he said this before with many players, he said this one pick and didn't play right. in the bowl game. If something happened to him and he couldn't get his money, regardless of what he did for Pitt, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So right. doesn't want to undergo that same yeah, good move by uh, Warren. Good, smart move by Narduzzi. Yeah. So that'll be it for this edition of the Pitch Stop. Again, remind you, you can listen to the show, download and subscribe anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, et cetera. Also listen to the Just Buckets podcast with George Michalowski and Burton. That's a fantastic program right there. They even got the whole graphics game going at their top tier A game. So, Mike, any final words? That'll be it for, for this show. No, I, I, uh, I'm excited. I'm heading down to making my first. This, this is the first for me, Mike. I'm heading to uh, my first road game as a non-member of the media. Oh, okay. And I, then we're I, talking I, about like what, 25 years or something? Because you did that. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to. Uh, I don't. I don't like to use the word fan. But I'm going as a spectator. Okay. Uh, Luke and I and my brother are going to head down. We're, we're going to make the drive down to uh, uh, off to of Louisville. Uh, for Saturday night's game. Uh, it's not a bad drive. I got family there. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. And uh, I, I think Pitts can – I think this week off is going to help them. I, I wouldn't be um, – I'd be surprised if Pitt doesn't win. So okay. uh, I think it should be a fun game, and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, seeing what Louisville is like. I heard it's a uh, – I see a lot of Pitt fans are already down there now. Uh, they got down last night. Never, never been to Louisville before? Never been there. So I'm looking okay. forward to uh, – Taking in a game down there, and uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Louisville, Louisville, I think is an underrated city. Uh, honestly, I got some family there. I've been, I've been there a bunch. I think it's an underrated city. It's not too bad of a trip. It's pretty cool. They got a lot going on there. Obviously, Churchill Downs. Um, I don't know if that's open right now. They go through seasons, but try to try to bet on a horse yeah. or two if, if you can. But that'll be that'll be it for this edition of the Pitch Stop. Again, presented by Pittsburgh Sports Now. That's Mike Fakovacan. Thanks again to George Michalowski. I'm Mike Osti. Have a great rest of your week.